Hello world, it's Lee Kelson coming to you live from Immerse 2017 and we have had an amazing day of presentations and um, and lo looking at how to um, get into AR and VR and uh, immerse yourself in virtual and augmented reality. Um, and one of the uh, speakers today, I, I was fascinated with your talk, <laughs> I really thought it was fantastic. Um, and as I said to you, um, when you were talking about um, some of the projects that you've done. So, so I'm, I'm with Dr. Sarah Jane Powell. Uh, Powell, P E W -L, L. That's right. Yeah. So, Aquabatics on Facebook. It's forward slash Aquabatics, forward which gives slash you an indication of what I'm talking about. So it's really interesting stuff, and we'll put some uh, links and, and some tags in, in the uh, in the post when we're finished with the interview. But can you just give us a little bit of context for people that don't understand anything about what you do or the the virtual reality stuff? Sure. So um, I've been working in extreme performance spaces. So I'm looking at real performance in really high risk environments, usually underwater, but I'm also looking at high altitude and training for human space flight. So that's pretty risky business. And I'm interested in how I can connect to an audience during those beautiful moments of discovery and, and challenge and isolation and all of those kinds of concepts and I'm I'm looking at augmented reality I'm looking at virtual reality I'm looking at linking with teams with even other more traditional media platforms even types of uh, cinematic technologies interactive robotic technologies and um, haptic feedback technologies that allow me to remotely operate other entities that might help tell the story yeah okay and so is it is it all in the name of art or is it technology i mean where are you are you coming from an artistic perspective into this technology i am actually so i'm i'm not fixated on the technology i'm interested in that interaction and i'm interested in how we can better perform and understand liveness so it's about uh using the technology as a tool i don't take i'm, I'm not so precious with it Right. So if we can, sometimes I'm hacking the technologies and I'm really interested in that digital interactivity but where the body is moving and there's some physical demand on the, on the body within a, in a particular state or environment and that's being preserved and the technology is another sign of life and a, another way of connecting that experience to others or for time immemorial, you know? So I suppose for people that haven't seen the work, it's very yes. difficult to understand um, With that language. What, what, what it's all about. But I think probably the, the project that was interesting to me, and because we've been talking about augmented reality and virtual reality all day, I have to keep checking that we are actually talking about mm. real reality or yes. virtual reality. Yes. And then you mentioned that you did a, the, the Everest climb. Yes. So tell me, how did that come about and, and what was that all about? Well, it was so interesting in this context, people have been talking about ex exploring their imagination. And I think you were one of the people who thought that I was just going into a VR environment yeah. of Everest. Yeah. And yeah. wasn't that awesome? And I was going to create artwork <laughs> in the VR environment. But no, I was doing it in the real environment. You went to Everest. I did. <laughs> yeah. So I created a project called Bending Horizons. And I literally wanted to expand my mind. I literally wanted to challenge my body and to step up into these spaces repeatedly as I was acclimatizing at various altitudes. And I wanted to record and document that as, a, as artists have been doing traditionally and historically for years on expeditions in all types of um, scenarios where they're entering a new world. Right. And my challenge was, well, to understand well, what kind of kit, what kind of techniques could I use, tools could I use, what was commonly available on the market, so that I could share that and, and in some way do that in real time, um, or at least in a trackable format, when we are still, we have amazing technologies, but the compatibility between them is pretty thin, yep. and they're not rated for adventure. Right. You, you suddenly get into a cold environment and batteries don't work. You suddenly get into a dark environment behind big mountains like Everest yep. and you lose connection with a satellite or you can no longer get sunlight for many hours a day to recharge via solar, yeah, right. whatever it is. Yep. Um, so you have to rethink it differently and that's a beautiful creative challenge in itself. You mm. become inventive. Mm. 
um, and, it, and it forces you to also be simplify as as complicated as this sound right. the most simple solutions are the ones that are portable that the ones that are probably going to endure um, so I, I think we have our own experience with that with you know we started yes. off doing our own uh, social media channel with iPhones and you know pretty basic gear but as you go you want to just get a little more a little complicated bit. and you get a bit more sophisticated and then it creates more problems and it does <laughs> right. it does and you think I could just get a little bit better resolution or a little bit faster response here yeah. what have you at the end of the day the direct human experience that raw live experience is what is, is the goal is yeah. the goal right. and that's the gold yeah. Yeah. bit and most times you don't want to be mucking around with your technology yeah you want to live it yeah um oh, so a good friend of mine um finbar hanlon's a great musician and um and you know he, he was talking to me about how simplifying the whole process of recording music because people have so much gear yes. they spend they go into the studio they spend nine hours playing with the gear and yes. half an hour playing the guitar yes. so it's that type of thing isn't it, it like, just get back to the instrument True, and when, when you live and work underwater, which is what I'd done for many years before that, um, you no longer want the bells and whistles. You don't need all the, you need what works and you need to know it in such beautiful detail that if, the, if you hear a slight vibrational shift or change in gases, that you know where to respond, how to respond and what to do. Yep. So just with regard to your background, just, just tell us briefly, what was the background that you came from? So I came from a background in the arts. I studied drawing and human performance, human movement. And then I did a PhD in visual art, but I explored human performance underwater. And I became a full commercial diver working in the field in order to inform my practice. Right. And so I was mixing these operational contexts and trying to find a way to bring the poetry of it and bring the human experience of it to a land-based audience yeah. because we need to protect our natural environments there are very few people living and working in these spaces but let's be honest the world is in becoming increasingly extreme and it's cha ever changing we need to be adaptable and uh, but we also need to educate and share the experience of these ecologies and um, the way we can better support and sustain life and right. and one of the ways that beautifully we express ourselves that any culture that has or civilization that has ever lasted has left an incredible creative legacy of their language of their culture and their expression of what it is to be human yeah that's what i want to be a part of yeah that's um that's fantastic and as i said i really sincerely loved the presentation i was sort of um it was it was uh, mind-blowing actually <laughs> and now the next uh, the next adventure we just finish up on this you're talking about going to space yes. and at the astronaut program that you're involved in so can you tell us a little bit about that yes i've been really fortunate to be involved with a few programs actually these are uh, one is a space analog environment called project moonwalk and this is looking at human robotic cooperation and and astronaut to astronaut cooperation for mars and moon simulations here on earth to prepare for future missions and i've been the simulation astronaut underwater um, in a one-sixth lunar gravity environment wearing spacesuits with a, a fantastic for a fantastic consortium of researchers around the world and i'm also working with another project on a suborbital mission and this is a citizen science driven uh, astronautics, scientist astronautics program for a suborbital flight called Project Possum. And Possum stands for Polar Suborbital Science in the Upper Mesosphere. So I will be undertaking, well, I've been undertaking training with crews to fly up into the mesosphere and to use long range tomography. So a big uh, camera that would take effectively MRIs of the noculucent clouds right so you, so you can see how my skills in dynamic environments underwater right. and also my skills in spacesuits and yeah. and things are coming to the fore right. and also my visual imaging and my capturing my visual capturing eye yeah. to be able to 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 observe and document and and pitch a camera at these beautiful inclusions in this amazing phenomena to help climate scientists understand something of these changes that are occurring right. up there and doing all of that while in my microgravity and spinning and coming down <laughs> upside down so that's the mission i'm planning yeah, for right. and it gives me a chance to work with beautiful 
um, technicians like the Cinema Swarm guys and Visitor Vision guys um, to bring those experiences back to a, an audience again, to right. create a virtual interactive AR environment so that I can explain some of those layers of interactivity for an audience so they too can get excited about the science and the potential. Yeah. Um, it really is fascinating stuff. So if people want to go and connect with your work or yes. follow you, where, where can they find you? Please go to sarahjanepell.com, which is a fantastic repository um, of all my data, my research. But also you can follow me at artistastronaut.com. And that's where <laughs> you kind of my work. Uh, I'm an Australia Council Fellow at the moment right. um, for Emerging Experimental Arts, looking at performing astronautics. So it's kind of a lot of fun. <laughs> And I'm, 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 I'm stepping into new territories here. Yeah. There are, um, you know, people, there's lots of scientists, engineers, pilots who have, who have stepped into astronautical professions and, and I'm trying to bring arts-led research to right. that. Yeah, it's fascinating. And open it up. Yeah. You know, yeah. connect. So go and check out uh, Sarah's work. Um, we'll put some links in this post, um, but it's been great talking with you. The presentation was fantastic. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you very for much. having me. The news is the most beautiful place. It's, it's been awesome. loads of fun. And where are you from? I'm from Melbourne. Okay. Yes. Oh, we won't hold that against you. I'm from Melbourne too, but we've, I, I, I came to the light side. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping to come back. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.